Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gospel Music Hour. I am your host, Reverend Nicole Balasing Holder, with you. Thank you so much for allowing us into your space, into your home, to wherever you are. Thank you for viewing, and we're so glad to be a part of your life and your routine today. Well, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made and you have the choice to be glad in it, to be happy, to be at peace. Well, this is the place where we bring to you wonderful music and anointed ministry to get you up and running, to inspire you. We have a great show planned for you. It's the beginning of a series that I'm going to start with you. Hope it's going to be a blessing to you personally, your family, your extended uh, crew and connection, even to our nation, because that's what we're here for. So don't go anywhere. It's time to worship. So let's come together and give God all the praise. And we'll be right back. You're on the Gospel Music Hour. All right now. You don't want to put no heaviness on anybody right now. Hallelujah! You see, I don't know about you folks down here, but I know the folks that came to Nassau, we came expecting God to do something great. We came expecting our faith level is so high. Explosion is about to take place. Maybe you're accustomed with it, but we're getting ready for something more, something more, something higher. Ah, and tonight, you know what you need to do? God is not a same old, same old kind of God. Come on, don't look at your neighbor, look at me now. God ain't a same old kind of God. And what he did last year, he ain't going to do this year. If you miss out last year, you miss out. But this is a new year. Come on, y'all, y'all too, too, um... You too sour over there. Come on, fix your face. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Your face is tired right now. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in all of the dance and the good music. We could forget our personal obeisance to God. I wish I could have gotten an amen right here. That while they're dancing, you can still lift your hands and throw it up and say, God, they're doing their thing and I'm ready to do mine. That's a good place for amen again. Hallelujah. And I want you to fill this sanctuary. There's a kind of smoky thing. The train is probably filling the temple, but that's their special effects. God wants your special effect tonight. Say something, say something. If you're not accustomed to making noise in your church, you don't worry about it. You're on kingdom ground. You can make some noise right up in here. Hallelujah. And tonight you got to move something. You got to shake something. You got to twist something. You got to lift up something. But God is waiting on you to do something. Shout yes. You see, we're talking about worshiping in crisis. Honey, when you're in crisis, you get crazy. Oh, y'all you, you, are hear me. Y'all are hear me. You see, when you're in crisis, God makes you crazy. So I need somebody. If you're going through, I want you to jump up and give God a crazy praise. Hey! It's about your worship tonight. 
It's about the sound that you can make tonight. I'm hearing the Holy Ghost say next level. ASAP, next level. Bahamas, next level. Next level, Holy Ghost. Next level, Holy Ghost. All right now. Just as God has taken us, God has hooked us up with Pastor Mark. We've been traveling all over the place and we know God is getting ready to bust something wide open. And if you ain't ready for that, you ain't have to come back tomorrow. Somebody gonna come and take your place. But just don't get in the way of the Holy Ghost tonight. If he slays you flat, just go down. If you jump all over this place, you jump. But do what you need to do to get what you need to get. Turn around. This, this is a song. This is a song on a brand new CD. And the CD is called Going Higher. Do we have any kingdom people in the house? Let me explain something to you. Kingdom people, we don't plateau. We just keep going. Oh, there are a few people who got the revelation. We don't stay where we are. We get uncomfortable really fast. And we know it's time to go. Oh, you're getting there. You're warming up. Listen to me. With all the anointing, I want you to turn around and look somebody in the eye. Prophesy to them. Make sure they're still smiling. Say, bless me and don't blight me. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Some of you all ain't turned your body yet. Come on, sir. You ain't looked that woman in her eye for a long while. Say, neighbor. We are going up. Now, I need you to talk a little louder than that. You've been really nice and conservative for the past year. It's time to shake you up and get wild right now. Say, neighbor, we are going up. We're going up together. Touch them and tell them, I'm not leaving you behind. I'm not leaving you behind. Tell them, we're going up to prosper. And give them a high five. Say, we're doing it in the name of the Lord. And I want you to get some attitude right now. Do we have any people with some Holy Ghost attitude in the house? Say, say, neighbor, one more thing. Don't talk defeat to me. No, 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 no. I want you to get real anxious now. Say, don't talk defeat to me. I am a child of God. And I've got the victory. Do we have any victory in this house? Yeah. You see, we are going up. <laughs> We're going up. We're going up together. I, we're going up to prosper. And how are we going? In the name of the Lord. Are you ready to move forward? Say, I'm going. I'm going up. Going up together. Lord, I'm going to prosper in the name of the Lord. If you're ready to go up, stick your foot up like that and take one step forward. Here we go now. Jump up if you're going up. Jump up if you're going up. Worship if you're going up. Praise him if you're going up. We are going up, up, up. We're going up together. We're going up to prosper in the name of the Lord. Say we are going up. We're going up together. Going up to prosper. Going up to prosper. All in the name of the Lord. Now tell your neighbor, woman. Don't, 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 don't. Don't talk defeat to me. Because I am a child of God. You see, I got the victory. Do you know who you are? 
so glad that you stayed with us we're so glad that you're viewing with us i know i have my regular little uh devotees and you're in uh some of you are shut in and you can't move and this is the church that you have so we say thank you for joining us and may god richly bless you and may his healing continue to be poured upon you well judging from a lot of stuff that i've been observing in the news and nationally and even uh personally having to counsel people and observing personal things within families and 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 people i realize that there is a lot of conflict going on unhealthy clashes which with our fellow man one to the other we find conflict in our homes with parents and children husband and wife people finding it a little difficult to get along uh we we see when we look turn on to the news and we look at international status uh country against country people having some serious conflicts some unhealthy things where no one is willing to back down and it is unhealthy clashes with one another and you know how we do it here it's always uh whatever issue we handle we always want to know what is god's view concerning this i don't care how sophisticated you are i don't care that this is the 21st century as far as god is concerned there's nothing new under the sun there was even conflict in heaven but let's see how god handled it you know when there is conflict when there is unhealthy uh relationship with people we need to begin to resolve conflict by taking the initiative in second timothy 1:17 for the holy spirit god's gift does not want you to be afraid of people but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them that's the word of god second timothy 1:7 when adam and eve sinned and disobeyed god god came looking for them and they hid and when god started to ask in genesis 3:10 uh adam says he was afraid so he hid himself and this fear is as old as the beginning of creation and uh we hide our true selves when uh we are in error or someone tells us we're in error or there's some sort of disagreement sometimes the first thing we do is hide ourselves and we are not true 
to ourselves. We don't like people to know what we're really like because we think, uh, what if I tell you who I am and you don't like who I am? And, and we're fearful. Some of us, we are approval addicts. We, we, we are addicted to approval. We, we want everybody to like us. But let me tell you something. Everybody would not like you. Our makeup, uh, God, God is a variety God. And some of us, our makeup, well, all of us, our makeup is different. We are made up different. We're from different backgrounds. But this, the, 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 the idea and the specialty is learning to get along together. And fear, what did, what did Adam say? Lord, I know I did the wrong thing and I hid. I was f afraid. Fear does three terrible things. To relationships listen to me if you're in conflict with somebody three things our fears make us defensive we are afraid to reveal ourselves when people point out our weaknesses so what do we do we retaliate and we defend and try to justify ourselves some of us do not like people to point out our weakness. We do not like people to say, well, not so is so. And we become defensive. And we become, uh, we, 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 we become very, very angry because we don't want people to point out. Because we feel that in pointing out our weakness, um, it is going to make us less of a person. So we become very, very defensive. And our, but that is not strong. That is not a, that you are strong willed or dominant or, or you want people to stay away from you. No, 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 no. That is a fear. What does fear do? It keeps us distant. We don't let people get close. We withdraw. We, we hide our mo emotions. We don't want to be open and honest. Maybe some of us have been hurt before. And they say, you know, um, how the saying goes, once bitten, twice shy. You know, I have put in myself in that, that situation. But that really and truly is a fear that you have not dwell, dealt with. So fear keeps us defensive, distant. Fear makes us demanding. The most insecure, the more insecure we are, the more we try to control and dominate things. We have to have the last word in a conversation. And, you know, we, 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 in, in order, it is really fear that we're dealing with, but we want to try to show a brave front. And by doing that, we try to control and we try to manipulate and we become horrible to other people in our lives and they they so that they could become fearful of us listen to me when you see somebody charging wrong like a bull in a china shop it's not because they they they, they, they there's a badger no no it's because there is a that is a symptom of fear that they have not dealt with so they feel if they take matters into their own hand and they try to make people fearful of them they will not have to deal with that. So the first thing we do in, 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 in resolving conflict with other people is we deal with our fear. We take the initiative by first dealing with ourselves. How do we deal with our fear? Deal with ourselves. And we have to realize, am I distant? Am I defensive? Or am I demanding? And look into ourselves and deal with that fear. When we come back, we're talking about resolving conflict, resolving disagreement, and we're taking it to the next level. Hope this is helping you. Take in some music, and we're coming right back. Sometimes you see me with 
Music Hour and we're talking about resolving conflict and the first thing you need to do is take the initiative and the first by taking the initiative you deal with your fears and where do you get courage to take the first step in going to that person and dealing with this conflict the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 7 as I said for the Holy Spirit God's gift does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and, incur and enjoy being with them. It comes from God's spirit in your life. You know why you're full of fear? Because the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power and love and a, and a strong mind. So the starting point in connecting with a person that you're disagreeing with, you need to stop and pause and pray and ask God to give you, to take away that fear, to deal with yourself and give you the courage to take the initiative to begin to deal with this thing. Now the second thing to resolve conflict, we need to confess our part. The Bible says, remember we're taking this at God's point of view, all right? You can think of it as foolish, you can think of it as all sorts of things, but hear what? Your conflict has not been resolved yet. So people who follow this, they don't have a conflict problem. Matthew 7, three to five says, why do you notice the little piece of dust in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood in your own eye? First, take the wood out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the dust out of your friend's eye. Now that is an aversion that you can understand. So when you are faced with a conflict, instead of accusing and attacking, in and blaming the other person you need to have a spirit of humility and even if 90% of that disagreement and that bother is 90 even if 90% is the other person's fault you need to come in humility and you need to start ask, confessing and taking your part everyone has blind spots and no one is perfect and there are things that we do to contribute to a conflict. And sometimes we have difficulty seeing that. We need to do a frank evaluation of ourselves. We need to be, a, be honest with ourselves. Half the time we don't back down from conflicts and we have things going for years, donkey years, and you're vexed with this person and vexed with this one and you have a grouse with that. It's because you are not taken responsibility how much of this conflict is my fault i need to do a checkup and admit when i am wrong and when even if you're right you need to be quiet 
You need to be still. Some of you all say, I told you so. Come on, husbands and wives. I want you to know. No, 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 no. That is not a nice thing. Be honest with yourself. Jesus said to look at what is happening with you before you try to do anything for anybody else. Ask. You need to ask yourself these questions. Am I being unrealistic? Am I being insensitive? Am I being over sensitive? Am I being too demanding or am I being ungrateful? You know, when we look at people and, and, and the number one reason for divorce, oh, we incompatible. Listen to me. You married that woman because she wasn't like, if everybody was like the same thing, you know how boring this world will be? Come on now. We have to learn how to and and you know what that means when you when you just jump up and boil inco incompatible that means that both of you have not grown up that means none of you decide you're gonna bend and you're gonna adjust and you 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 you're gonna meet in the middle the, listen to me life does not go the same all the time you've got constantly got to make adjustment and our nature is to be self-centered and to be stubborn Eh? Yes. And you want things your way. And more relationships die from inflexibility more than anything else. What does the Bible teach? We must lead with humility and we must be the ones, even if we write and everything's showing right, we must still be the one to say, hear what? I'm sorry. I don't want this thing. Because let me tell you, you might feel, all right, that person out of my life, that person, that's still with you. That you're going to sleep with that every night. You had to wake up with that every morning. So begin to deal with it by going and taking the low road and saying, here what? I take the initiative. I am confessing I was wrong. You know why? I did the self-evaluation. And what does the Bible say? That those who are based, those who take the low road, those who decide to be humble, those are the people that God will exalt. Take a deep breath, eh? Because I know some of you are taking this at all. Who, oh, me? Are you coming down there? Listen to me. If you want change, if you want to breathe again, if you want to live without thing over here, and me, I care how much you pray, I care how much you think you reach. You've got to deal with conflict in your life in a healthy and a godly manner. So we're giving you the tools to get up and get. Take in some, take in, drink your coffee, take a deep breath, take in some good music. Let the presence of God just surround you so that you will be able to receive more of what God is saying to you. This is the Gospel Music Hour. We'll be right back. Once 
I'm guided by a perfect plan I don't want to be outside your beginning this series on how to resolve conflict you know there's i will say and it takes two to tango so you know you can't have conflict and it's you alone because then you're gonna be mad we had a party and say dance right it because there is a disagreement between you and another person and uh we've got to learn to take the initiative to deal with conflict by dealing with ourselves we have to learn to see and to evaluate what was my part in this whole thing listen to me i don't care what you say it can't be somebody do you something do you something all the time no 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 you probably get immune to certain stuff and you retaliated in some way and you need to confess your part in this problem and the third thing is you resolve conflict by putting the other person first now i know this is not the world's way of doing things but this is god's way in philippians 2 4 to 5 each of you should look not only to your own interest but also to the interest of others your attitude should be the same as that of christ jesus oh dear you're praying you believe in god you believe that jesus loves you well here he's saying is your interest shouldn't be your own there shouldn't be selfishness in your life when you are if you really love the lord then you must become like jesus conflict does not resolve itself it must be dealt with intentionally conflict gets worse when you leave it alone if you have something wrong with someone or uh, or someone has a problem with you take the initiative to work it out when should you work it out one time at once postponed conflict only gets worse you need to do it as soon as possible before it festers and it turns into bitterness listen to me if somebody said something or there was a misunderstanding deal with it one time now man don't go up there wrong and strong and you want to cough down and you want to beat down no 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 that never solved nothing before and it's not going to solve anything no you understand and if you keep doing that your life is going to continue in turmoil so what you need to do is to if if you have a wrong perception of what was said or what was done work it out now man we usually have that 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 everybody what now and again you go rub shoulders you know and and you need to ask what did you mean so 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 i just needed to get it right in my mind and you're not doing it uh, in a defensive manner in a manner where you want to fight and beat down and think no i just need to know because you know what when 
I reach home. I want to put on my head and sleep song. I don't want this thing bothering me. Because you know what we do? We go away. We don't deal with it. And because, you know, so, 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 say so, so, so. And this one, do that. And then, no, no. And then the devil now just want that little seed of thought. And then he's going to start to magnify it. Then he's going to start to make it big. And she really do this. And she really do that. And then you going and looking at that person with all sorts of imaginary scenarios in your mind. Things that never really happen. So when conflict come up, when misunderstanding come up, deal with it immediately. Let people know you're an upfront person. You cannot just look at your own viewpoint. You have to look at the other person's viewpoint. And it is very difficult. It is not natural because it will require an intentional shift on your part uh, where you need to change focus from looking at your needs to looking at someone else's need. The problem, a big, big problem in our nation today and, and, and with people all over the world is because we are naturally selfish and we want everything for ourselves, our family. God bless me and my wife, Dan and his wife, we four and no more. You ain't want God bless nobody else. You have to look at somebody else. It is also, it is also going to take God working in your life to change that kind of mindset. And when we understand where people are coming from, the less conflict we are likely to have. How do you learn to understand others? You listen. More listen, more listening, and less talk. Again, this is not easy for some of us. Madam, oi, 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 the mister talking, well, listen, man. Mister, mister, turn off the TV and the radio and the this and, and listen to your wife. Listen, and don't just listen to hear how you could fight back and how you could respond uh, to, to defend yourself. No, 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 no. Listen to understand where that person is coming from. We don't stop to listen and we get too anxious to make our own point of view. You are most like Christ when you ask, what are his or her needs? How can I meet them? You see, when you're angry and you're preoccupied with yourself, you will always be preoccupied with yourself. When you're vexed, you want to give them a piece of your mind. But what did Jesus say? Let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. When you are like Christ, you look to each other and not your own. One of the most powerful peacemaking statements is when you say to somebody else, I am sorry. I am sorry. Wow. And we, 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 we grasp and say, you know what? I know how you're feeling. And I apologize for that. So we need to look at the other person's interest higher than our own. Wow. This is an amazing teaching. Let's take in some music and we're coming right back. destiny a place where naked eyes can't see rivers of your love overflow me like a sea oh lord the god of time and space all dark So excited to be in your secret place. It's not a place that's 
was fantastic being with you today. And I hope that you learned something and you find you begin to heal. You begin to take action and you begin to take steps. Deal with that fear. Evaluate what is happening. You know, listen to the other person. Confess your fault in the entire situation. And we're not finished because there's so much more steps that you need to take to get this right. Some of you haven't spoken to people in years. You know what? But this is all about handling yourself first before you approach them. If you left that thing undealt with, come on now. Don't let it stay a minute longer. It's time to deal. It's time to fix. It's time to make it right because it's for you to be healthy. It's you, for you to be of ri in right standing with God. And when you're in right standing with God, you will be in right standing with man. If you want the entire series on how to uh, handle conflict, please, the email address is on your screen. I will send it to you immediately. Come on, write us, call those numbers. We are praying for you and with you. So don't let bitterness and unforgiveness and anger reign. Let there be love. Let there be joy because that is what God wants for us. God wants the best for you. So join me next time where we continue this series on conflict resolution. Well, it was wonderful being with you. We love you with the love of the Lord. To all my Tobago people, we love you out there as well. And to everyone who joins us, come on, be a witness, be a testimony, be someone that will change their world, make an impact for Jesus Christ. You, this has been the Gospel Music Hour. I am your host, Reverend Nicole Balasingh Holder. Please call us, let's pray with you. Let's be a blessing to you. We love you, we care about you. Trinidad and Tobago, they are more for us than against us. Mwah! We love you, bye-bye. <laughs>